What's up, cinephiles? For this episode, we are going to review Greyhound, directed by Aaron Schneider from Apple TV+. Plus. Now, if you are new to our channel, consider subscribing to us for weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Now, Kevin, take it away. What is Greyhound all about? Greyhound tells about the story of a U.S. Navy commander, Ernest Krauss, played by America's daddy, Tom Hanks, in his first wartime assignment to defend a merchant convoy ship during the Battle of Atlantic in World War II. Phil, what do you think? Well, Kevin, this movie actually made me miss the cinema. Yeah. This made me miss watching at the movie theater because this is perfect for that. Because in a way, this movie went the Dunkirk route. Even though that this is focused on solely one character, this is just really about an event of something that happens at a short period of time. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, there's not a dull moment in this movie. There's tension all throughout this film. And I really loved it. The scenes, even though you can see that there are some budget constraints maybe because this is an Apple TV Plus original. This isn't really made by a big studio. So you can see that there are obviously some budget constraints so they can't go really wild with their action sequences. But it is still entertaining nonetheless for me. And as soon as that tension just keeps building up and building up, my enjoyment for this movie also just never faded away. Kevin, how about you? I wish I've seen this in the cinema. It's really unfortunate because I feel like our experience will tremendously grow if we watch this on the cinema because this is the ultimate cinematic experience. Having seen this movie, it feels like I've seen the best part of a larger film. Chopped away all the early build up, those slower moments, and condensed them into full action pace. The level of suspension and thrill is really sustained all throughout. It's surprising because I really love war film and I can tell that you enjoyed that too because something about seeing accounts told in history really gravitates me and it's really an appealing piece of cinema for me. But you know, going into the 20 minute mark, what surprised me because with all those throwing of navigational jargons barking orders 20 minute mark i said to myself oh no i think this movie is not for me and i kind of wish the dynamics of the movie changed but you know what's interesting is that correct me if i'm wrong i don't think we've seen a world war ii movie that focuses solely on the battle of atlantic we just see them in passing like in dunkirk that movie is able to take us from land water and air here this is more of tactician decision making everything needs to be done on a rapid fire decision and yeah it spends most of the time barking orders drawing these coordinates launching missiles trying to avoid those torpedo rockets coming underground and with all those technical jargons throwing over my head I felt like I'm the useless cabin member of the crew <laughs> that's what I really felt <laughs> maybe it can be alienating for the casual viewer I wish that it was able to resonate for me more don't get me wrong the staging of the action sequences even though they're working on a budget here they're commendable and you can really feel the fear when you see those torpedoes going near those ships clashing together but it takes a while to realize that maybe this material of solely focusing on the battle of the atlantic ocean is not often used in previous war films because it's not interesting enough so my main problem here comes to the material itself and you know knowing tom hanks wrote the screenplay here and it's based on a novel i did appreciate that this screenplay does not hold back it's very unyielding like yeah it might alienate the audiences but going on that route it seems to be unfazed on how its audiences might digest everything that's happening because you are just clueless as a casual movie goer and as the realness aspect of it but in terms of showing an engaging war drama like i've seen so many war dramas before like it didn't really reach the heights of saving private ryan i know that would be an unfair comparison but i guess i have watch so many war dramas that i have so many hallmarks when it comes to that and did it really engage me i don't think so but tom hacks really did a lot to make this movie engaging for me yeah would you like to yeah he did a lot of heavy lifting yeah tom hanks uh we all know that 
he's not really a stranger to war films because of the likes of Saving Private Ryan and we all know like what you said he's America's dad is yeah. that what you would say? Yeah I, I didn't make that up he used to be known for as the America's sweetheart now he have developed to become the America's dad yeah especially since recently he played Mr. Rogers mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, Tom Hanks, it's really no surprise that he can be this good in a movie. Of course, we all expect that he will do some heavy lifting. And with regards to your issues, I won't really disagree. Because all of that, I also saw it. I think that this movie has very thin characters because this is more of an event movie. But maybe I didn't have that much of a problem with it when I realized that it it's really going for the Dunkirk route when like what you said that the movie is really going for being like the third act of a whole film it's like we're just watching the climax of an entire movie I'm really glad you mentioned all that jargon maybe the reason it didn't bother me is because I really found it amusing that we hear them shouting all these orders it's amusing to me to realize that back in the day if you messed up it can really mean life or death because with regards to where you're gonna steer the ship or where you're gonna point all yeah, those yeah, shots right. there's a part in this movie where someone sneezes at a very <laughs> crucial moment <laughs> I, I'm really glad they included that it makes all of them spitting out all these things all the more amusing for me because I just kept waiting if someone's gonna screw up at a crucial moment so even though this war movie can't really be compared to all the other greats that we've seen all throughout the years i gotta say i haven't been seeing all that much engaging war movies that tackles on naval battles yeah. the last one that i've seen i think is battleships a sci-fi movie but the one <laughs> i enjoyed rihanna? that is that the one yeah, yeah the one with rihanna yeah yeah uh it's it's more of a silly movie than this but this is much more engaging so yeah. i really really enjoyed this film yeah. nonetheless yeah i did realize that they were going for the don kick route the thing is with don they take us to many heights and dimensions utilizing air land and water and here yeah. you're kind of stuck on the same room so I did felt seasick maybe I needed more character exploration and character development because there's mm-hmm. very little I do like however the character yep. of Tom Hanks that he's a grounded Christian man especially in the beginning parts of the movie when they seem to be throwing lines biblical passages which seems like a normal thing like well these people are really imbibing the Christian life so I find it really interesting but you know what there's something innate about the quality of Tom Hanks that even if he, the character his place is very thinly written we've seen him so many times that he played such varied characters throughout his filmography we already saw him as a captain of a ship in Captain Philip then yeah. the pilot of a uh, playing in Sully, then the everyday man role from Terminal. Even though the character he played has not much dimension into it, whenever he imbibes that role, he suddenly adds layers into it. It's something that only a veteran actor can do. Maybe it also helps that he did write the screenplay. He knows what to do. He knows what expression to imbibe when it comes to showing terror at the same time showing complexity because at one point one character is cheering because they've sunk a ship of 50 men and he replied back with something like yeah 50 souls so you know that his character understands that these are the things that they need to do but they can't really erase the fact that they're killing people in the progress so that in the performance alone of Tom Hanks really helped me get into the deeper exploration of his character even if the script really fell short for me and as well as for the supporting characters I'm sorry to say but I just have no I have zero rooting interest for the sporting characters <laughs> and it sucks because we have yeah, two, me too. we have two great actors here uh, one is Stephen Graham and then other one is Rob Morgan towards the end he, he's going to lend some emotional weight to the movie and I felt like this show didn't really spend much time on him to give that much of an emotional impact the direction it's actually good it's adept for me but you know when it comes to the cinematography it, even though you see this clashing ships this the rage of a roaring sea it starts to feel numbing and at the end it just feels like the whole movie is on a monotonous tone for me and 
and there's a sense of redemption towards the end that I didn't really felt much impact. So yeah, I guess it all boils down to the viewer accessibility and lack of character development that I've been wanting. Okay, in conclusion, Greyhound, can it be compared to the other great war films that's based on World War II? Not really, but it still made me miss sitting in the theater and wanting me to watch it in a big screen. So that has that going for it because this is a really enjoyable watch. I didn't really have that much problems with how monotonous it can get because I really enjoyed the tension field scenes, uh, all that action sequences i i really enjoyed all of it even though most of it is them just shouting orders again and again and again i don't know i just really found that amusing but they have very thinly written characters and without tom hanks playing the lead role i think that this movie wouldn't have worked as good as it eventually ended up being but i'm going to give this movie a four out of five stars i wish i've seen this on the cinema because i think my my experience will improve and I feel a little bit unfair that I'm giving this grade but it just came to a point that I was feeling so alienated that much that it was just all a cacophony of noise without really much rhythm into it though I really appreciate the way they put more dynamic in when it comes to directing and cinematography and staging all those set pieces but you can really do so much with with such a scope of a material that only transpires with a number of hours and I wish mm. the movie slowed down a bit but yeah I, I'm gonna I'm going to stick with what I felt like it feels like a climax of mm. a bigger movie and even though that's the best part of that said movie I don't think it's going to stand strong alone so without Tom Hanks this movie would have definitely sunk but you know I, I'm gonna give this one a 3 out of 5 and that's it for our review of Greyhound. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also guys, tell us what you think in the comment section. And thank you for watching. Till then, see you on the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.